Hey, good morning, Jamie. Good morning, Audrey. How are you? Good morning, everyone. yoo Good morning, Irene. Hope things are well in Lavoie land. Good morning, Sharon. How are you? Great to see everyone. How are you? How are you? Good morning. It is a glorious and beautiful day for sure today. Good morning, Amy. Can't stay for the whole. We're here. I'm uh, so glad you're here. So glad you popped in. It is. Uh, it is great to know that you're journeying with us, even if you're not. Uh, you're not here for the whole time. As you know, uh, our Facebook Live is uh, um, is always here on the site, and it's also uploaded to to YouTube. So if you want to go back and look at uh, either our and and watch watch our services or see our our past 1111s, um, they are there on uh, on our YouTube channel, which is FCC Fall River. Um, so, uh, or you can uh, or you can catch it here later, or you can just come in and say hi. It is a joy uh, to have you with us either way. I hope you're doing well. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Audrey. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Priscilla. Good morning, everyone. Shelby, good morning to you. Hope you're doing well. I am all over the place today. Good morning. I hope everyone is doing well. We are we are here. I am the uh so I checked into the city yeah I, the yesterday and went by the barbers and there's not even a sign. There's not even like you know, coming back soon, nothing. So this could get uh, this could get unwieldy. That's what I'm just saying. You know, the werewolf look is a possibility here in the days ahead. So morning, Jackie. I hope everybody's well up there. I uh, hope you're doing great. Good morning. Yes, yes, yes. Back into Riv. Good morning, Doris. Hope you're doing well. Good morning, Linda. Yay, I always catch these too late. Welcome back. Thanks. Yes. You know, uh, yeah, working at home is miserable. Like, uh, you know, home is not meant to be the place of work. I mean, it's really, if you live and we love, you know, it's plenty of work to do there, but man, it is, this is, uh, um, hey, we are, uh, um, I know for those of you who are homeschooling and stuff like that, it is, it is some serious, uh, Main Street on Tiverton Line Barbershop. Yeah, nothing's open, honey. Nothing. Nobody. Nobody yet. So anyway, I'm not above a black market haircut. That's all I want to. That's all I want to know. Message me. Message me. So anyway. So um, morning everybody. It is Tuesday. Tuesday, the. 19th day of May, uh, and we continue this journey of, uh, of um, kind of being separated, being apart, uh, but gather, but uh, still gathering, though we cannot be together. So I am, uh, I'm so glad that every one of you are here today. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, Bob Guinan. So good to see you. Deb Votrin. Hello, hello. Saw them cutting hair on next door to Nick's Hot Dogs. All right, I'm on it. I am on it. All right. Good morning, Maggie. I hope the Pereira clan is well. Great to see you. All right. And I can go to Nick's. That's a like that's like a twofer right there. All right. Not three times whistle that for Jose. I know we have speakeasy haircuts now. All right. Uh, welcome everybody. We are in this journey together and I want to, uh, uh, just remind us that kind of that, you know, we are a part of this world that uh, that great things have been happening in. Uh, one of the great things was uh, just this last um, last weekend was actually. Uh, I know we've been talking about kind of some of my anniversaries and stuff, but they're not my anniversaries; they're just church's anniversaries. But last week weekend was the anniversary of my installation as the pastor of the ch of this church. So it was a year ago last weekend that the installation happened, and. Uh, you know, if you were there or you, you've seen some of the things and if you want to go back into our archives and you can listen on SoundCloud, you can listen to some of the installation talks. They, 
they were really brilliant. I don't know who these people are that showed up to, to my thing, but uh, it was glorious. And they are, um, so um, if you want to go back a year ago into SoundCloud and, and uh, research some of those, they are well worth the listening to. And, uh, you know, we had the opportunity to have uh, Leonard Sweet with us, who is, who is just one of the one of the one of the great names and and just really christian thought these days so we were blessed to have him uh it was it was a high weekend for the church and so i want to uh but i want to revisit that because i think one of those things of uh you know so in installation if you don't know what it is a pastor uh is is called by a church so me the so that so in our tradition we are a congregational church if you're not part of the congregational way that's all right that but we you know you it's there the, there's no bishop there's nobody that sends anybody anywhere that you're simply you we simply find a match through uh the a regular application process and so uh, the church looked at 60 some odd different candidates and uh and ended up um uh finding you know uh the, we ended up finding one another in that in that process, and and uh, then we are then a pastor is called to be uh, their the the pastor, and so you show up and and it goes for a while. Um, traditionally, it's about a year or six months somewhere in there, and then at the end of that period, there is this there is uh, this this uh, question made, which is like, well, do you, are you are are you willing to go forward with this thing? Like, yeah, I am willing. I'm, you want to go forward with this? And so there is this installation. There's this covenanting ceremony uh, of a pastor and a church. That's what happens. And so, and that's what happened a year ago. Hey, Kim Moniz. Hello. It is, uh, uh, it, that, uh, um, and so we came, so it was a year ago, this last weekend, that uh, that all happened. And there was one story that came out of this that I think is particularly, that that weekend that's particularly worth sharing and uh it has it, it has enduring qualities for us and that uh many of you heard the story if you were there you probably know it but i think it it bears reminding for us and it is it is a story that len sweet told us as he stood in with his kind of incredible you know commanding presence in the in the pulpit and and uh and and invited us to to remember uh, that in the early church there was a symbol, and that symbol was uh, there were there were numerous symbols because in the early church the church was an underground movement. It was against the law to be Christian. It was against the law to gather. It was against the law to be together. It was against the law to be. That actually, the early Christians were you know what the early Christians were called. This is a this is a great little. The early Christians were called atheists, that because they didn't believe in the gods. They, they they were called atheists. They, they they didn't believe in the many panoply of gods within the Roman world, so they were atheistic. They, but uh, and so they had to f- find ways in which to talk about their faith and this faith that was going to persecute them in the world. And they had to talk about the, and they had to be able to do it with symbol, not with language, because if you did it with with language, you would likely get killed. Like so. Um, so one of the great symbols of the early church, and the there, if you go to the to the uh, the the church in Bethlehem, where that is built upon, so the supposed pot in which Jesus is born, uh, that church, uh, there are many lanterns, and they are all have uh, ostrich eggs in them. Uh, that that they're the and it became the ostrich egg became a symbol of the early church. That's that was its job. That was what it did. It was it was that uh, that uh, they would use this symbol. Um, it would be set out. It would be held, and the, as a way of being able to signify and uh, um, one another, and also a way to hold their faith in a time where th- having their faith might get them killed. And so the reason the ostrich egg became is that because the ostrich is an interesting a- animal. The whole ostrich head in the sand thing, yeah, they don't do that. That's a that's a made up thing. But the ostrich, uh, the ostrich egg. If you look at this sucker and how big it is, like I'll put it next to my head, like it's half the size of my head. For a predator out there in the world, it is a feast. It is a it is the greatest of feasts that you will ever find uh, for anybody in the desert. Uh, any hyena, anything that's trying to eat you, uh, this 
is a buffet, and especially you put three or four of them together, it's a super buffet. It's like the Chinese food and the steak all in the same row. I mean, it is, it is exactly what every predator in the desert would want to find. And so what the ostrich does, like many other creatures, is that it lays its eggs and it buries them. Now, the problem with the ostrich is that it got a little tiny brain. It can't remember anything. It's got a brain that's literally almost the size of a walnut or, or smaller than a walnut. Like it's a, it's a pea brain. And so it has no really active memory. But what it does have, if you've seen a picture of an ostrich, great big eyes. And so that what will happen is mama ostrich will lay her eggs and then it will she will range away from her nest to take to lure off predators. She will range here and uh, she'll range up to a mile away from where she's laid her eggs. And yet in that, in that laying of her eggs, uh, that it's not that she remembers where she laid them, but she always has an eye on them. And if she ever takes her eye off of her eggs, she forfeits her future and she forfeits her life. Friends, this became a symbol of the early church that because it was a symbol of how we might be in this world. We might range far. We might read far. We might study far. We might have all sorts of things that are a part of our life, but we should never take our eyes off of Christ. And that when we to continue to have one eye on Jesus, to continue to have one eye on God, to continue to have one eye on, on the, all that is good and right and true in the world, and from that place, range and move and have your being. Like that, that not to be not, that not to be locked up and locked down. That's not the that's, that's not the invitation of the uh, of, it, but it is to range wide and far with ever an eye on the one who made us, so that we should ever have our future. You see, this symbol was how to be in the world when the world was coming for you, and trying to prey upon you. And trying to eat all that with all of the future of what you might be. So, but we are invited to range wide. We are invited to to experience much in this world. We are invited to to be far out in the edges of things. Yet on the edges of it, we should never ever to take our eye off of Christ. This is. From Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes used to be one of my favorite books. And it, it, uh, it says this, it says, Just as you do not know how to breathe, just, just how you do not know how the breath comes to the bones in the mother's wombs, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and at evening do not let your hands be idle, for you do not know which will prosper, this or that, or whether alike, you will be good, or, or whether both alike will be good. You know, inside in this age, it's hard to know what to do. It's hard to know the right action. It's hard to know, do I do this? Do I do that? How do, how do I respond to all these things that have been asked us? How do I respond to everything I've lost? All the things, all the simple things that I've been doing that I no longer have. Keep an eye on Jesus. Keep an eye on Christ. Keep an eye on the one who made you. And, in, and from that eye, range wide and far. Do some things. Don't do some things. Some things will work out. Some won't. It doesn't, it doesn't matter nearly as much as that we keep our eye on all that is good and right and true in this world. The really real. The logos that comes for us. Hey, Robin Carden, good to see you here. Welcome, everybody, and uh, thank you for uh, for being a journey. Because that's that's it for our day. I wanted to ra- remind you of uh, of the hallmark of this weekend and our and our ministry together. I want to remind you of this symbol of the ostrich egg, and that uh, that uh, um, that that uh, you are not that that you might you, you might feel like you have ranged far away 
from your church and from goodness and from life and from purpose and from meaning. But all that is required is that we keep an eye. We keep an eye on Jesus. Keep an eye. And in that, our future is sure. And uh, the, all that is good and right and true will be born into this world. All right, friends. That is, uh, that is our, um, our journey today. That is our, that is our invitation. Uh, we are talking this week about the, what is to come next. So we actually have a uh, deacons meeting this afternoon and a council meeting on Wednesday. Uh, through this process, um, we are going to make some decisions about what our worship will look like as we go forward uh, towards this Sunday. So stay tuned with that. Um, also, we will, I will be here all week with uh, continue with 11:11 as we continue this time apart and this time of separation. Uh, so uh, again, keep your eye on the one who made you, and everything else will find its way. Everything else will find its way. It'll be all right. All right. Blessings, friends. We'll see you tomorrow.